guys, welcome to Next Level Live. Thank you for jumping on. Really appreciate you uh, taking the time. This is our, we call it the 50 yard line. Like we're halfway through the year. We're not, what'd you say Mike? We're not technically halfway. Mike's always gonna do, we're holding on. We're really 25 right. weeks, right, or something, but this is technically, we're, from a calendar standpoint, calendar -wise. we're halfway through the year. We're a couple weeks behind because the number's gotta come out. But I wanted to give you a review of that and then talk today about something we don't talk a lot about, which is really, hiring, getting new agents moving. So if you're selling anyway, I mean, this, we're always talking about sales, this is the numbers, these are sales numbers, but I really wanna kinda of get an idea and talk about what people are doing to help build this amazing organization. What really hit me the other day was, we could produce, and it sounds crazy saying it, Mike, but we could do, we could, these vendors could do a million Facebook leads in a week. Isn't that crazy to say that? Like, yeah. like, and it wouldn't be a big deal. It wouldn't be like, oh my God, there's nobody left to talk to. Um, in case you haven't all, like, social media is a, a monster. <laughs> Everybody's on it. I mean, so, so we are, there's so many people out there that are, and I think what hit me this week is I had three or four different things pop up in my feed, which were, um, what is that noise, Mike? Keep that down. I, I get so distracted with the noise. Mike knows. It's, Mike, it's just Bill. Right? It's just it's Bill. Okay, I can't be mad at Bill. He's out there doing something. Yeah. But we have soundproof the whole room. I want this to be soundproof. You can't hear nothing. Well, let me know how much it costs first. But right. then we, we'll do it yeah, let, yeah. Let's just see how much it costs. Um, but really, what hit me was these people are asking, and when I say these people for 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 donations, like, can you help me? So and so died, and we're trying to pay for the funeral. And it hit me that man, we've not even begun. There's so many people out there, because I'm, for me, if I see three or four in a week, with the amount of people that I see on social media, how many people out there are dying with no life insurance, not enough life insurance, are getting sick and being told they can't get the life insurance they want? So you know what I said? We are, we are for me, I'm like, we haven't started. We could issue $500 million a year, wouldn't be like, we, and we still wouldn't help all the people we need to help. So that being said, let me hit on some numbers for you. Our goal is $250 million this year. I said, Mike, we're gonna do 100 million in life, paid business. Always be, the guy said to me the other day, you know what I realized about my company? They only talk about submitted business. I go, what did that make you feel like? He goes, I quit. Because, well, it wasn't real numbers. He's like, I just, he goes, I wanna know how much people were getting paid. I need to know, and he goes, we don't track that. We only track the submitted business, and I gave him the old baseball analogy, like, hey, how's your kid? He's good, he has about 140 at-bats a year. I know, how is he though at the plate? He got, he's leading the team in at-bats. He had 140 of them. Well, you coach, you might just put him up, up to the plate. I mean, does how many hits he got, walks, how many times he strike out, whatever. So, at the end of the day, for us, these numbers are really important. So, it's funny because, Mike, when, do you remember when, do you remember when we were issuing, and I'll take October, this October of last year, what were we issuing in life business a month? Probably four million in there. It was north of four million, but not very much. Like it was, right. we were trying to get to five, right? We have a legitimate shot the month of June to issue eight million in life business. Right. Legit shot. Now I tell you that because we we are at five point nine one four three weeks in. In the first week, Mike, I think we did like one point three or something. 1.4 the first week of June. Some of that one, didn't we? Didn't we? 2.3. I'm sorry, 1.3, that would be terrible. 2.3, 2.3, then we fell, you know, but 2.3. So if we can do 2.1, we're gonna have done 8 million. And, and here's the thing, we're just getting started. You know, a lot of folks, they, they, you know, people, I think a lot of people run their business or their lives based on, if I have what I have, because here, the money's just, and I'm not, listen, we're not a non-for-profit, but the money's just, it's just money. It's just green paper. It's a It's how many people can we actually go help? And since that's our goal, Mike, there's really not an end place for us where I come in and go, hey, Mike, we're good. I mean, guys, let's just try to keep it the way it is, and if we can keep it the way it is, we'll be happy. Let's just not try to screw it up. We have just begun, and a lot of people that we work with aren't where they want to be, as it pertains to how many people they've helped, the amount of money they're making for their families, the amount of money that they can give back. Um, you know, it's one of those things that when you look at, for us, you know how big a fan we are of the Dream Center, right? And how much, and every time 
we're able to just go, and we don't, you know, and Joanne, our social media person is like, you need to talk about what you guys do, but we don't, Mike, we just don't get on every time and go, here's a check, and because we thought like that's, we don't want to brag, but then we're bragging, and I tell people it's not bragging if you can back it up, but then I'm a hypocrite because I don't want to brag, like it's, I'm kind of, my mind's moving, right? I'm like, but then I'm bragging, I don't want to, you know, and we just want to help. It's an amazing feeling to think about what we're able to do and, and where we want to go. You know, somebody said to me, what's your ultimate goal? What do you want to make a year? I'm like, well, we want to give away $10 million a year. I, you know what I mean? What do we give away? And we don't need that. What we give away last year? Half a million? Yeah, like, yeah. and we want to do more. We can only give away some what we, we still have to like, we got to run the company and you know, we like to, there's things. Same business. <laughs> what's that? Got to stay in business. We got to stay in business. You know what I mean? And, and we're not enamored by, people are always like, tell me all the things that you have over here. What did you buy? I'm like, I don't, I'm not that deep, man. Like. You had to tell me today to change my t-shirt. Yes. You're like, is that your favorite t-shirt? I'm like, well, I like it a lot. You're like, we have t-shirts. Like, if you want to wear another one, you can buy one. Like, I'm able to buy it from the right. company. Like, you can buy it over here at the rack. We have them everywhere. So, for me, I'm just, it's not that deep. But, anyway. Um, so, we're at 40 million with, in life business, a little less than half a year. Now, 100 seemed like it was so crazy. Yeah. But the rate of growth, Mike, there's no reason we can't be issuing... 10 million a month in life, September, October. There's just no reason we can't because we continue to grow at this rate. Contracts are up, issue paid numbers are up, leads are up, opportunities up. We continue to do things we the way we do them and most of the companies out there continue to do what they're doing. They hold on, that's fine. Everybody's, listen, do what you wanna do. We've been paying high, high comp and supporting you. You know, we have our convention coming up and we have um, Connie Podesta, right? Yep. And JR. Yes and J.R. Martinez, who crazy story, like had a, had a very um, uh, horrible, well, I'm, I'm saying, had a very um, insanely um, violent experience in IED, right? Where he blows up and, and, and the things he's done and the things he had to go through, I've just kind of read about it, watched him on YouTube and and then Connie Podesta, when we said, when we heard she does psychology say, we're like, that's great. Yeah. We thought we created it. We realized she'd been doing it for a long time. So we didn't steal from her, but we're like, this psychology of sale seems to make sense. It was just what we talked about in our training. But I started listening to her, you're like, man, she's unbelievable. So really excited to have them. And for us, they really fit who we are. Um, with all due respect, there are people that wanted a quarter of a million dollars and said, I can't talk more for more than a half an hour. Why? Which means I'm only gonna come there because of my name. When we're like, but we don't sell tickets. So to get you to come and not talk and not train and not motivate and not empower. You know, I mean like, Mike, I've seen comedians. You ever watch a comedian and laugh for the next two and a half months? You don't, dude. No. You laugh while you're there, you tell the joke twice, you forget it the next day and it's over. Right. Your life didn't change. You were just numbed for an hour or two. It didn't change your life, you know? And I think for us, we want to make sure these folks we believe are going to empower the people that come because we don't charge the event. We're not going to charge the event. And with Dave Anderson included, I think we're going to give you three people along with all the other people we got speaking and training that are going to empower you. Tom Hagner. Tom Hagner, who's... Tom's unbelievable. Yeah. Tom is... I, and I'll tell you, it's funny because when I met Tom, I'm thinking, you understand, Mike, the annuity knowledge I have fits in here, right? You could put it in here and it wouldn't overflow. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I kind of go like, hey, Roger, why don't you all figure this out? And then, and then what I love about him is like, hey, Hegna's unbelievable. Let's get him. And I'm like, okay. And I'm not like beyond, Mike, I'm be honest with you. I'm like, all right, it's going to be great. And I'm sitting there hanging on every word he's saying. Right. Going, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And you say that? One made me want to leave the event and go start selling annuities that day. Just like when I hear like Brian Mendenhall talking about selling life insurance, I'm like, give me something, give me somebody, give me, what do I do? Like, if I go, give me some apps. You're like, there's no more apps, dude. It's not paper anymore. Use your phone. I'm like, oh, no more apps. I can't, I don't have to carry the bag. So my point is this. We're very excited about that. It's in line with who we are. I want to hit on some numbers really quick and then get into our training today. We actually have, I mean, these are career totals. I don't want to, but we have... You guys, again, you know that I can read you through all the numbers. We have a couple people over two million. This is career. Matt, Matthew John is at 2.6. 
Amy M's at 2.2, Linda L's at 1.9, Mark 1.9, Frank 1.8, Jack 1.7, Paul, Andrew, Conrad, you're like, what about a lot? You all know who they are, they work with us. <laughs> you know everybody's selling too many. You can almost have one name when you're doing a million a year. You know, I'm just kind of like, you can be entertainers like Prince. I can just have one name, I don't need two. Um, Conrad 1.6, Jonathan Porcina, I mean JP 1.6, Danielle, so there's an army of them down to a million. We've got 26 people. So you got Israel, Len, Ryan M, John Gav, Brian M, Millie, Josh R, Wayne C, Chris, White, Tiffany G, Zach L, Terry H, um, and John Wetmore. Uh, Deonis just hit it. He's our newest million dollar life boost. Congratulations, Deonis. Deonis D, Chantel W is just about there. She's 993-372. Um, Jordan S, 935,356, just about ready to hit it. JJF, same deal, just about ready to hit it. Um, our John Hancock, so we're, we're, we love the company. We think that the Vitality product's a great fit in certain situations. I think every product's got their own niche. It's a nice deal as far as, um, you know, adding on. Well, I think Paul McLean sent the best email ever the other day. He's like, hey, we've been selling like 250 grand CBO and then, or 150 grand CBO, it depends on what the death benefit they need and what the mortgage amount is. And adding the Vitality on is an extra because I get more death benefit over here and it's not a full 100% return of premium, so it's cheaper. So I can give him this and that. I was like, wow, that's kind of brilliant. When he wrote it up, I was like, you can see it, we put it on social media. But our top, our leaderboard for um, John Hancock top 20 is Elaine F, Grady P, Yuli G, Ivan V, Mike K, Mark G, Brig G, Kristen R, Eric S, Israel W, Galen W, John H, Matthew John. Um, I have Matt J W and Matt A W. I must be. Matt Walker, right? Yeah, his dad. His dad? Matt and his dad. That's awesome. How about that? Nice. Don't hey, his dad. You ever met his dad? Yes. You ever seen his dad work out? You wouldn't be knowing on videos you watch his dad work out. His dad walks in like he's never he hadn't worked out and you know what like so it's like he's just hanging out. Yep. He could be in like, you know, he didn't wear jean shorts, but he could be like whatever. Like you'd be like, he's going out to go hunting. And he puts like 225 pounds on, he bench presses it like 99 times. And you realize that's the guy you don't want to mess with. Yeah. You know, you just kind of you avoid him. You see him. You walk on the other side of the road. Joe M, Millie P, Joseph C, Revenel. If I pronounce that wrong, please let me know. D, Gene uh, E, and Chad P. So that's your John Hancock. Um, and America, I'll give you a top ten. Chad S, Greg B, John P, James W, Robert R, Grayson H, Zach C, Zach T, Amy M, and Ivan V. Ivan's already issued 210,000 in life business with America, and it's not halfway through the year with just America. So, he, you know, hey, you know what he's good at? Math. Yeah. He's like, 8% of 400,000 is $32,000 they're going to give me in bonusable money. So, that's amazing. Uh, new agents, Marima M. So it's issued 145769 year to date. Sacramento J 151860. Nadine L. Like, think about this. This is halfway through the year. These are new producers, hadn't written until this year. Nadine L's 154. This would be better than a leaderboard on every other company out there. This is our call it new producer rookie leaderboard. Nadine L 154966. Robert R 161696. Eric S. Schmidt, 163601. He's been full time for like two months. <laughs> um, Paula K, 169273. Bradley A, 173363. Carol V, with an E, so if I'm pronouncing that wrong, C A R E L V, uh, 17760. And I mean, if you I pronounce it wrong, send me an email and go, hey, my name's not pronounced that way. If you think I made a mistake and it's obvious, you can put that in there too. You can be sarcastic because I apologize. Gregory B, 19913. Grayson H. New producer, not even halfway through the year, 227546. Yeah, so it's um, overall life. I mean, I, I can't even, where do you even start? We got, we got four agents over 200 grand already in life. Zach T, Grayson H, Ivan V, John P, Amy M. Um, we got another 20 that are above 150 already year to date. I mean, like the first year, how many people have to do over 150? I'm, Two maybe. I don't know. It's just, it's just crazy. And then overall, so you get your life and annuity. I mean, we got, we already got 10 people over 200 grand. Zach C, Millie P, 
Keith C, Grayson H, Zach T, John P, Danielle B, Ivan V, Amy M, and David P. 340, 312 already, halfway through the year. You just kind of do one of these, like, uh, you know. That's what I said to my son the other day. He's like, see that pitch? I was like, yeah. He's like, what's wrong? I'm like, that was just disgusting in a good way. He's like, what are you doing when he throws you that? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Hope he doesn't throw it again. Don't act so surprised. Hope he throws your fastball. That was, bad. That was a nasty pitch. So, that being said, and I had a great conversation with Ruggiero this morning. I said, hey, annuity numbers. He goes, before you even go any further, they are going to, matter of fact, I told that he was in the, in the car with Charles, his, uh, his eldest, and uh, who have not seen him. He looks like he can play tight end in the NFL today, not in the future. And uh, not that he can't in the future, he already looks that way today. And uh, I think it's a Northwest thing too, because Matt Smith's daughter is going to UConn, in case you didn't know, I already got her committed. She's going over here. Over here. Um, and uh, I'm kidding, by the way. It's probably some kind of, maybe somebody probably get in trouble. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> so everybody's, oh, my good God, you know what I mean? Um, and stuff like a different animal. Yeah. So it's, uh, but, but I was, you know, I was talking to him, I said, Charles, we, we need this annuity side. Like your dad's in charge, but I'm not trying to put any pressure on you, Charles, but we need to be at 150 on the annuity side. We're gonna do 100 million plus. Actually, I'll do 110, we'll do 110 in life. We we'll do 140 in annuity volume to get there. So we're tracking and it's, we're gonna give 250 one heck of a run. And then Mike, you know, we laid out about a year ago the 150 to 250 to, I'm telling you, to, to 350 to five to seven. And it seems so crazy in 2013 to talk about issuing a billion dollars a year, but it's not so crazy. Hiring agents getting them moving. This could be for you if you're selling. Um, you know, people say, what if you hire somebody that really is just interested in selling? Like, I was interested in selling. When I got, when I got my license in 2008, I was only interested in selling, just so you know. Um, but what happened after about a week, I realized that I was interested in my friends doing better in life too. And while I was only interested in selling, which is true, and I wasn't interested in hiring 14 different staff members to get an office, I was very interested in sharing what I do with my friends because I did want them to do better. Because most of them were where I was at. I te I, we tend to, I didn't hang out with a bunch of self-made millionaires, not that I wish I didn't, and I didn't hang out with a bunch of people that came from a ton of money and didn't need the money. So the people I was working with and knew, spent the more, majority of my time with were, they had worked at like UPS with me. They worked in the state of Connecticut. They um, were in real estate and they were looking to make extra money. We talked about it all the time. So I didn't think, when I saw life insurance, I was more just thinking about helping them. So I think, Mike, I kind of tricked myself. You know, a guy had come up to me and said, you need to make a list of names of your friends. And I said, for what? He goes, I'm gonna call them. Like I said, do what? And I'm gonna hire them. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Cause that's awkward and weird. They don't know you, that's weird. They're my friends, I'd like to keep them my friends. I don't have a lot of friends. I'd like to keep the friends I got. So I'm not gonna do that. And by the way, I'm an adult. And as I, cause I see this makes money already, I'm already gonna talk to the ones that I want to. So like, if you don't mind, mind your own business. Kind of just keep it moving. And I started talking to people I knew. Um, you know, Mike, I take you for instance. You know, I didn't know you. Right. How'd I meet you? Uh, you, did, you did your banking where my wife works at the time. You, you, knew, you knew my wife. Why'd I, talk, why'd I talk to your wife about selling life insurance? She spoke Spanish and seemed sharp. And? She don't take no junk from nobody. True. So I was like, she's smart, she speaks two languages, and heck, she's gonna understand the blue collar clients we got. She'll be upfront and direct, and I don't think she's gonna be concerned if she's telling the truth. I think if they're, they need the life insurance and they're not gonna make, I think she has no problem saying you need to have this, and here's why. I, I felt very comfortable with that. So for us, that's how, I, and, and then she brought you, we, I was doing a training meeting, which I invited her to. Right. How excited was she about something? Even before the meeting, does she have any interest in selling life insurance, do you believe? She might have. A little, I mean, she had an interest in doing something different. There you go. The bank was just not cutting it and she'd been there for probably three or four years already at the time and realized you, you couldn't work your way up like they promised you and raises were very small and just Correct. the way they treated everybody. She wasn't happy there, so she wanted to do something different. And when I talked to her while I was sitting in the bank line, like I always try to wait for her because she's sharp. Not all of them were. No. <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't make them, but I was like, kind of like, it's just a deposit. Right. And it wasn't like I had a lot of money. It's like, it's $89 or like I'm cashing a check for 104 bucks. Can I just get my money? And, and you know, I remember saying to her, I have no idea if this is for you or not, but I know that you don't seem content doing what you're doing here. And she said, I'm 100% not. 
I said, and then at that point in time, you should start to figure out things that you think will help you change that because this isn't working for you. It's not working. And she's like, no, it's not working at all. So, so I think she was open-minded enough to know exactly what you said. I don't know that, and, and at the end of the day, do, did I analyze or rate her on, I just knew that she, uh, she was a good person and she wanted to make extra money. That's it, that's all I knew about her. I was like, I like her, she seemed like a good person, and she's not happy doing what she's doing. So why would I not share what I'm doing? Because they're paying me. Yeah. Is it easy? No, it's work. Is there other ups and downs? Yes, there are. Is it everybody gonna be insanely successful? No, it's like anything else in life. Everybody's not gonna be, but I shared it with her. And then she brought you to a meeting, we met, you decided you waited a little bit, got a license. My point is this, you know, and we're gonna finish up the second part of this. I want to, people to understand, so at the end of the day, I never wanted to be told to do it. By the way, I never do that as a manager either, a VP, whatever, you're, you're hiring one person, you're, whatever your title is, wherever, whatever level you've hit. I don't tell adults what to do unless they ask me to tell them what to do. I don't do that. I don't go like, by the way, you need to do this. Now, if I just walk by and you go, how are you doing? I go, good. And they go, hey, can I ask you a question? Yes, that means you want me to give you advice on something. And if, and if I give you the advice, I go, you know, do you mind me telling you what I would do if I was you? No, please do. If you go, no, please don't. Like, I'm not mad. I go, all right, cool. I just offered it to you. I'm, I, I don't know everything. I ask people how to do stuff all the time. Hey, how'd you do that? How'd you get that set up? <laughs> how'd you buy that building? How did that work? But what did you do with the leases? And how did that work? I just, can you educate me more? So for us, it was, I shared it with anybody that I knew that needed to make extra money. That was it. The only barometer for me, Mike, was do you need to make some extra money? Or, or do you want to change your situation because you don't like the way you're being treated or you don't have control of your own time? I think to stay with your theme, I think Christina didn't enjoy the way she was treated at the bank. I think that they, it was, in my opinion, watching, it was a very like dictatorship kind of deal. I'm in charge. That's why and you'll do this, and if you're late one, I mean, it's just, it didn't seem enjoyable. Right. Now, does it mean work's supposed to be so unbelievably fun? You can't hate it. You know, people say, you don't sleep a lot. I love what I do. By the way, when I used to work at companies I didn't like, Mike, I did sleep a lot. <laughs> I wasn't excited, I'm like not a delusional, like I've only always slept an hour and a half a night. If I didn't enjoy doing it, heck, laying in bed was better than going to work. <laughs> I happen to want to get up at 4.30, 4.15, because I love what I do. I happen to want to stay up at night, like working, thinking, talking about it, and you know, still doing stuff with the kids, whatever, but because I enjoy what I'm doing, we're making a genuine difference in people's lives. That's enjoyable for me. I like that. We have the ability to quadruple our sales force, and Mike, I, before I transition, I'll tell you this. When I went and met with y'all at your place and heard you talk and heard her talk, knew you were smart because I listened to you speak, I felt really bad for you. Not bad like, oh my God, what's, I felt, empath, I empathize with your situation. Yeah. You're a young couple that didn't know how to make, didn't know how to make go of it. You didn't, you weren't raised by anybody that said, hey, do this, this will work or do that. You great people around you, they made bad, they just didn't know how to do that. And I saw these two young kids who were scared. And too proud to admit it, but scared. Right. I think she was a little bit more willing to admit it than you. A little more outgoing and boisterous about it. And I thought, what would it feel like to help them? Because I'm not going to be the one doing it. To help them change the situation. That's much more valuable to me than the money. Money's going to come. Go do the right thing. It's going to show up. I mean, that's fine. So, Mike... As I, as I transition to how do we help agents get moving faster, how do you help them get moving faster, what should the structure be, what should it not be, structure is awesome. Order of people around, not so much. Meeting people where there are, awesome. Trying to make somebody do something they didn't ask to do, not so much. Discerning between the two of them is how you will have a very big business, you'll make a massive impact on people's lives, and you will make a lot of money. And there's nothing wrong with that. You choose to give a lot of it away, I think you'll do better. I don't think there's any coincidence, Mike, we started giving away bigger checks, dreams, and everybody else, probably about October. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we started to give a lot more money away, and we had to make more money to, to continue to give money away, and I just, I think the correlation makes sense. So now transitioning to how do we pick who we're working with, and how do we get them moving faster? 
So like I was saying, I, I think it's um, really important for us to take a look at what we're doing here as it pertains to you building your business. Now, I want to make sure a lot of people go, well, how do I separate selling and hiring? Well, I didn't. And I didn't because I didn't think, I think selling, like in, in sales, right? what do I need to do? I need to be on the phone enough and make my 30 appointments a week. That's it. Make my 30, even if I'm not crazy good yet, uh, 20 of them are going to be there. I'm not crazy good yet, I'm going to close 10 of them. I don't care who you are, what part of the country you live in. You got yourself a life insurance license, you have leads, you spoke to 30 people, you're going to have 20 of them there and you're gonna have 10 of them you're gonna close. Yes, there might be a given week that something happens on occasion, but there's gonna be weeks where you're gonna have 28 of them there and you're gonna close 24 of them. I mean, but on a, you're, you're not gonna have an average below 30 booked, 20 met with 10 close. You're not going to, if you're working. You're not going to. If you're giving them a shot and you're putting them first, you're not going to. So we know that. I think that the hiring part for me I never stopped selling to hire. I think a lot of people like think it's some activity that they have to make it so bifurcated. I don't think that it is. Mike, when I talked to Christina, I was walking in the bank to make a deposit. It wasn't like I didn't stop my day and go, now I'm in building mode. Let me, let me get in building mode. I mean, there are companies that back in the day did 35,000 applications a week, didn't have leads, and didn't do any recruiting aside from more market. Am I a believer in more market recruiting? You better believe I am. And I'm, more, I'm a believer in it first and foremost because the people I knew, Eric Anthony deserved a chance. He worked 70, 80 hours a week at a company. He got paid a wage that got him by. And he missed out on a lot of stuff with his kids and wasn't making the money he wanted to make. He deserved a chance. Eric Schmidt, same deal, six days a week, deserved a chance. Matt Walker wasn't making the money that he needed to make. Had a couple kids, quick. One wife wanted to make more money, and in the situation he was in, he had zero chance, to, like what he was doing for a living, to make that kind of money. Yes, I think he deserved a chance, but I didn't stop my selling to all of a sudden go, hey, you all want to sit down now and have four different meetings? I was like, hey, man, you should do this. You should sell life. You should get a license. You should get the license because no matter what happens, nobody can at least take it away. Like, you keep working. You do the right thing. Nobody can take it away from you. You renew it every year. As long as you do everything you're supposed to do and always treat the clients right, you'll be fine. So why don't you get the license? If nothing else, you'll be educated on it. Why don't you just get the license? And then it's, why don't you make some phone calls and call some folks up and see how it feels to call them and go out and help them. And then it's, hey, while you're out there, why don't you work on these things? I'm here to help you. Then it's the person coming back to me, Matt, Eric, Eric, going, hey, um, I'm thinking about doing this full time. I'm thinking about leaving the job I have. I didn't hire them or recruit them and go, you should do this and leave your job. I just said, it seems like you're looking for a way to make extra money. I, I, I think you should get a life insurance license. So I never thought that they, that, that was, that, that now cold market, same deal. Now, a lot of people I think are warm. Like if I walk into the Verizon store and talk to you for five or seven minutes and I like you, I, I might look at it differently, but I look at you as warm market, not cold market. I, I don't know. I just do. I, I, I mean, Mike, I didn't know Christina's having the bank. I would interacted with her five or six times, but she was still warm. Does that make sense? Like, I didn't, yeah, I'm a lot older than you guys. We didn't know anybody in common. It's not like I was like, oh yeah, Mike, you know, we played ball together. I didn't know you, but I still thought enough of having talked to her a couple times that she was warm market. I just felt that way, you know? Um, and I think it's the same, if you can, if you, and I love what I do too, so like loving what you do and protecting clients and making money, for me, I just didn't know a better way to do, to achieve what I wanted to achieve in life. So I think you never do. So, so a part of it is, you know, how do I find the time or how I'm selling? I, well, you're always hiring and, and my sales always came first, right? By the way, my sales always came first in regards to everything, meaning it's how I took care of my kids. It's how I take care of my kids. So like, for me, I never was like, well, wait a minute, this is going on personally. It doesn't matter because I have to, I have to do my job. I have later in the night, early in the morning, the next day if I'm out in the field to handle that. I, I can't, unless it was emergent about my kids at that moment in time, it didn't need to be handled. It didn't. It was, I put that all to the side. I didn't need to handle that. So I don't try to juggle all these different things. When I was, you know, Mike, when you went in the field and I was still selling full time, if you called me 
and I thought it was advantageous for me in my appointment to take the phone call, I would. If I was in a good place at that moment in time in my appointment, like it was going good, or moving to closing, I'd answer the phone and put on a speakerphone, say, hey Mike, I'm on, no, you're on speakerphone. Not that you're gonna say anything wrong, but you're on speakerphone. I'm sitting here with, uh, with Tom, with Susan, they're a great couple. Um, I told them you're a newer agent, I'm trying to help you. What's up, bud? I didn't care, I had no problem. But if I was in a place where I was talking to Tom about his family and it was maybe getting a little bit emotional and maybe I was pushing a little bit and he was kind of pushing back, I didn't stop my deal right there where I needed to continue to do what was right for that couple to take your phone call. Now you might go, well you should have. Well, which I know you did, but you should have. No, Mike, um, hey, you're an adult <laughs> Be, and, and I'm here for you, bud. But a lot of times early on, what do agents, early on, why do agents call the person I work with most of the time? To ask a question they usually know the answer to. Well, that, and that's a good answer because you're like, I really don't. I think when I think when you called me, it was you want to know it's gonna be okay. Not that you were being. You want to know it's gonna be okay, right? Maybe you didn't close three or four or five in a row. You want to you want to talk to somebody. You just wanted a voice. Right. And I'm good with that, except I didn't take away from my sales if I stopped right then and there. Where I was at that point with Tom, and took your phone call. All of a sudden, Tom, can we used to always say at the state of Connecticut, my boss, remember when I first started, I was 21, 22. He said, Sean, when you get called out, you'll be doing what they call an investigation. Something will have happened, and you will be called out to the house, the hospital, the police department, you'll go out there. And that initial interaction with them, the ability to get information will be 100 times more than once you go home, come out to the office tomorrow, and meet with them the next day in two days and five days in a week because they're in some kind of crisis mode at that point in time. And they're much more vulnerable and open. You know, I was my, my daughter went to college orientation the other day, and the parents had to come up too, so I'm listening to stuff, which is fine, it's great. And the guy said when he worked, it was kind of neat, he gave his talk, but when he needed to talk to students about something, he would call them at 7 a.m. And he said the freshman year, kids don't know any better, and they think, like, the principal's calling, so he'd be calling from, like, student services. I need to meet with you today at 12. And, they, and now if you call a junior in college and say that, they're like, I don't need to do anything. <laughs> Matter of fact, you can't even talk to my parents about anything, so I'm just here, bro. I to, but the freshmen are like, okay. And, I, and somebody's like, why do you call them at 7 a.m.? He's like, they're not on their game at 7 a.m. They're tired. They're like, uh-huh. And you're like, Mike. And you're like, yeah. Hey, Sean, student services, man. Hey, I need to see you today at noon. You're not on your game. Noon, I call you at noon, you might avoid my phone call. I might look and see what they, so, so for us, for me, I couldn't take away, my client was in that place where we had cracked some kind of emotional barrier. I didn't stop that. That's that whole flying an airplane, oxygen goes on you first. I gotta take care of what I need to take care of, it's how I feed my family. And Mike, if nothing else, it also teaches you to sometimes just get through. And then sometimes what you do is you answer your own question. Yeah. That I'm not saying we don't go, of course we help any agent, we, we should be. But it's also okay to go, hey Mike, let me run something by you. Can I ask you, did you know the answer to that question? Mike, can I ask you, I mean, in a lot of it, sometimes you just want to hear that, hey, bud, you're going through stuff I went through, man, it's going to be fine. And sometimes you didn't say it to me, I just knew you were thinking it, so I said it, right? Um, we, when we looked at the organization we're building and how fast we built it, and again, I still believe, Mike, I never was the, here's my list of people, hire 72,000 of them. Guy was like, you hire X amount you'll move your level up. And I go, what about my pay and their pay? <laughs> no, 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 but if you, I'm like, I'm not interested, bro, I'm, I'm not interested in that, it's not that deep. I wanna make sure we're helping clients and the agents are getting paid. That's, you know, kind of a great question. We had a staff meeting the other day, and I said, this company back in the day did, you know, 30,000 apps a week, and they, they had not, having billions of assets, they did very well. And she said, is the person that was in charge of that a good businessman? What well, is a good question. I said, depends on what your goal, is if the goal was to make a bunch of money, I guess he was. But our goal is to truly, truly benefit client, agent, then the company. If it doesn't benefit one of the three, we're not successful, in my opinion. So, in those days I talk to about with people, they don't have to know everything about life insurance and you know what the regulations are and what an IUL is compared to a term, compared to a whole life. They don't need to know any of that. I just need to know that they have a, they have a genuine interest in changing. So. Mike, when you were starting out and you went out and ran business, and how did you learn 
in the home. How did you learn? What was one of the biggest lessons you learned? Because one of these people don't know about Mike is Mike sold a lot of insurance. Now, I was kind of like, dude, you need to come work in here like 80 hours a week because we need you to do a myriad of things. But Mike sold a lot of insurance. Mike can sell 20, 30, 40 grand a month. Mike can sell. I don't think you were born to be a salesman. I, don't, I ever, I was like, this would be a lot of work. I think you, you know, you like people, you're honest with them, but I don't think there was anything, you know, salesman-y about you. But what were some things you did, Mike, that allowed you to get better with your clients in the home? Yeah, I think um, number one, you always used to tell us, you know, the person who makes the most mistakes will have the most success. So I think early on I made a bunch of mistakes. Um, and I always try to outwork it. You know, I, I saw at that point, at back then maybe it was 10, 20 appointments a week. You know, we didn't have, we didn't understand we could run 30. But I always knew that, you know, you always thought about getting more swings. So I tried to get as many appointments as I possibly could. And for a while, like, I listened to the training and I take most of it in, but there were some things I wasn't comfortable with doing and that was holding me back. So once I started getting uncomfortable, and I'll never forget it was, Early on, I was probably selling for about a month. It was the first time you'd given me an appointment. You called me, I was out in the field, it was, I don't know, eight, nine o'clock at night, and it was an appointment you couldn't get to. So, um, and you always did your, your great sales, but just a great couple, they're ready to buy, and like, That's right. you set me up, like, Everyone okay, it was a lay down, so I'm going in perfect. So, I meet up with you, get the lead, show up at the house, it's like eight, eight o'clock at night. It was a young couple. They're probably in their mid thirties. They just put their, their one child, they put their kid to bed and we're sitting down at the dining room table. And, um, you know, I go through my whole opening deal. I'm, you know, building rapport with like, everything that I did in my other appointments. And then up until this point, this is before he apps, you always would tell us, just pull the application out, assume the sale. And up until this appointment, I never did that. I always would kind of wait for permission. Like I'd kind of pull it out and like, you know, you guys think you want to, and the thing about it, it's not really sales. So I was able to close a decent amount and still not get fully uncomfortable. But I knew knowing you long enough at that point that if I didn't close this appointment, you weren't going to give me any more appointments. Like I, and so I got, I understood that. And I remember sitting there and, and the wife, you know, I showed them the three options and they had, you know, 200,000, it was your ideal mortgage protection appointment. And I remember getting to the point um, where I knew I, I should have pulled the application out and then the wife starts with, you know, do you have your business card? And I'm yeah. like, oh God, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> you know, um, cause we never do anything the first night and we always think about it. And, and then I remember just looking at my bag and I was like, probably as red as my shirt. And I just I pulled the application out and just said, yeah, what's your middle initial? Like, what are we doing? Like, we're going to apply to make sure everything's approved and you guys want the coverage because you told me you don't have anything and you have one child, you know, you guys both work, something happened to one of you and the other one wouldn't be able to stay here. You said that. And I'm like bright red. And then she's like, well, what are we doing? And the husband's like, oh, I think we're applying. Yeah, we're applying. Just, <laughs> her, her middle initial is I and we just start filling everything out. And then I just realized, like, I was making it a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. But because I treated it like a big deal, they did. And then once I finally decided to treat it like nothing and just truly get uncomfortable, go, go over that line that you used to talk about, it was fine. And we filled out both applications, they both got approved, they both have their policy to this day. And then from that point on, then I, I continued to do that. But I think the biggest thing was getting uncomfortable, but just outworking it. You know, you, there's a learning curve that you have to go through and it's, do you want to make that, that curve, you know, three, four, five, six weeks, or do you want to run a bunch of appointments and go through it in a couple of days? Now, how long have you been selling at that point? At that point, it was probably a, a month or two. About a month. And so you'd be in the house prior to that, wait for permission. Right. Right. They'd literally go like, let's apply. And they'd tell you yeah. to get the app out, really. Yeah, they'd ask me, what are the next steps? Yep. Um, how did it go from there after? Did you start pulling the app out all the time or did you stop? Did you go back and forth? What did you do? No, I, I started pulling out every single time, and I, I probably went from closing 40 to 50 percent to 75, 80 percent. So that's the thing, I think we, you know, and again, I don't want to, we, and I say we, but like from 2008 to 2013, man, we just like, do we sold 85, 90 percent of them? Not, right. and we weren't great. We just were very presumptive. Right. Um, and if somebody wasn't, a, we didn't carry one to another, so. You know, you didn't close somebody. We were just like, it was like, we come in with app out. Like we made, made small talk, we laugh with you. And it was like, here's what we're going to do. 
That was always our deal. I mean, how many times we said, here's what we're gonna do here. We had yeah. everybody, everybody, you just hear everybody in the office. There wasn't, there wasn't but 20 of us, but here's what we're gonna do. So here's what we're gonna do today. No, I understand everything you're saying, so here's what we're gonna do. And we were just so unbelievably presumptive that people were like, okay, it wasn't unprofessional. It wasn't abrasive. We just were like, what are we, well, what are we doing? We're applying. And then you get the one, like you said, that spouse who's like, yeah, we're applying, that's our right. initial. Because he's thinking, we do want it. Yeah. Like, he's here because we want it. We filled this form out because he wants it. Because a great question always was, hey guys, if you don't mind me asking, you know, if I get to that point, I'm six, seven, eight minutes into it, realize, man, you're, if you don't mind me asking, when y'all filled this out, what did you think was going to take place? Well, I thought we'd get information. Well, you have information. But the only people that fill this out, guys, are people that need the product, which by the way, everybody needs it. So our only people that need the product, so you fill it out because you need the product and you thought you'd get information, which I've given you, it appears you're eligible. What did you think were the next steps at that point in time? Right. Well, I guess we think about it. Okay, so that's, with all due respect, odd to me because what would there be to think about? You need it, you can have it, now let's just find the package we're going to get and put it together. This isn't, you know, and then, and then it was whatever it was, right? It was 200 grand to whatever the mortgage was, the age, the whole deal, which you need to put together. But I think for us, it was really hard because most folks will just, you know, never forget, man, Ben, I've told this to some people back in the past, you know, I went to the police academy when I was 21 and this guy walked in and it's like the second day and there's a guy who's about 6'6", 260 pounds. And he says, let me ask you how many altercations you think I've been in. Like, people attack me, resist and arrest, that kind of stuff. And then here's my partner. And the guy's, he's not six foot. He's not a buck fifty. And so one of the guys immediately goes, well, who's going to mess with you? And he goes, the reality really is that I've been in more altercations than I wish to have been in. And my partner here, I could count on one hand in 20 years. Do you know why? And everybody's quiet. He goes, because I really had to learn to take control of the situation. And I didn't. I'd walk in and watch everything and try to figure it out. He'd walk in and go, you over here. Hey, come, hey, enough. Come here. I got it. I got it. Come here. And they would come over because people would fall in line because they expected you to provide structure. If we showed up and there was a bunch of kids fighting, there was an altercation, he would come and control it. I wouldn't. Me not controlling it would make people nervous. And then they would react to me. It wasn't the size, it wasn't like, who wants to fight, they're not trying to fight it, it's just, I wouldn't give them structure. I always tell people, do you parent your kids the way you handle your appointments? Well, of course not. Well, explain that to me. Well, I, I'm in control of my house. Explain that to me. Well, I tell my kids what to do. Why do you tell them what to do? Because I want them to be safe. Okay, when they get older, do you ask them questions? I mean, they're not eight, when they're 16. Yeah, but I discuss with them why this is not in their best interest. So you parent them, yes. What do you think your clients have asked you to do? Part of parenting is protecting. Your clients have asked you to protect. So why would you not act that way? They expect you to protect. So when we hire new agents, we need to find out who wants to protect. So that, for instance, Mike, when I hired him, let's just use cold market, I would call him on the road. Hey, Mike, how you doing? So it wasn't hard, like, you be Mike, because I'll answer. So you be an agent, Mike. You say hello. hello. I go, Mike? Yes, Mike. Hey, Mike, Sean Mike, Family First Life, had run an ad on uh, ZipRecruiter. You had responded, it talked about great first year income, uh, part time, full time, leads, high comp, great training. Do you remember that ad? I do, yeah. Outstanding. You have 10 minutes or so, probably going to take that. You got five, seven minutes, Mike? Yeah. Okay, great. Where are you currently working at now? You're selling life insurance, Mike? Uh, no. Okay, so no life insurance. You ever been licensed before? Nope. Okay, what do you do for a living? I build houses. Build houses. You build them like you're the GC. You build them like you're the guy framing them, plumbing them. What's the, what do you do? A little bit of both, depending on the job. Okay. Do you own the company you work for? No. Okay. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, about ten years. Got it. If you don't mind me asking, what's been your best year of pay so far? Uh, Fifty thousand. Fifty grand. Wife, kids. What do you, what's your situation? Yeah, wife, two kids. Got it. Wife, two kids. All right. Wife work? No. Got it. So she doesn't work. So. You responded to that. What was the number one reason, Mike, just out of curiosity, you responded to the ad? Not about us in general, but just the ad. Just Why the, you... the amount of income. Got potential. it. Okay. You do know this has nothing to do with hammers and, and micrometers and... Correct. That makes you happy? Yes. Okay, got it. So this is not a, like, 
getting your hands nah, dirty. I've been building houses too long. It's, it's time for a break. Got it. Let me tell you, Mike, real quick what we do. Our, you know, we're at a company called Family First Live. There's a number of reasons that we think that we're in a better position to help people. A, we do pay more. So it'd be like if you were framing a house and one guy or girl was going to pay you 10 bucks an hour and somebody else would pay you 20 bucks an hour, you'd work with the one paying you 20 bucks an hour, right, Mike? If all things were equal, even if things at the 20 were maybe not as nice, like you had to come in at 5, 30 instead of 6, you'd probably take the twice as much pay, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we pay a lot. We think our situation is better. We don't ask you to sign a contract. We don't put you on a That's what almost every other IMO is going to do. We don't do that. It seems awkward because you're an independent contractor. We have phenomenal leads, more importantly, social media. But before we get to that, Mike, because that's all you'd have to get your license, um, you'd have to guess you go online and get your license. Would you be able to make time to do something like that? Yeah. Okay. So it's not very difficult, Mike, but you do have to study. You have to go get your license. And all we're looking for, Mike, is people that genuinely want to help people out. I'm going to send you over a couple of trainings so you can watch real quick. Um, you know, if I asked you if people like you, you're going to say yes. It would be weird if you say no. We're going to learn if they do. A lot of our clients, Mike, are very much blue collar people that work really hard for their families. Their job is to protect their families, whether it's husband, wife, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle. They're trying to protect either their mortgage, Mike, so if they, if they were to die to make sure the house stays in the family, or they're trying to pay their funeral expenses. Sometimes they're trying to do both. We only call people, Mike, that have asked us for help. We don't cold call. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So we don't expect it to be hard since we don't cold call. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, Mike, is we'll, we pay for you getting a class, but Mike, before I send you a voucher getting a class, can you do me a big favor? Sure. How old are you, Mike? I'm 36. Okay, so I'll be hiring you as an independent contractor, so I can ask you how old you are, I ask you how old you are, you're 36 years of age, Mike, I'm 46. Um, if you don't plan on getting in a class and it just sounded cool to respond to an ad, can you tell me now? Yeah, no, that's not the case. That's okay. Kind of why I respond. Well, I'm saying, you understand, it's an extra right. email. And people just okay. don't tell you. Like, if you were building a house, and I bring everything back to what he knows, just like I do with a client. Like, if you're building a house, and I said, eh, you know what? Why not? And then you, you built this dormer, and I go, I don't want it. You'd be pretty upset with me. Yes. Because I'd go, I didn't want it. You're like, yes, you did. I'm like, I told you. I'd just rather have you go, dormer will look like garbage. Don't put it on my house. Right? right? And if you show up and I don't want to use you, you'd rather have me tell you that than have you work for three days and tell you I'm not going to pay you. Absolutely. That would really upset you. You'd much prefer me go, hey, I decided to go in a different direction. Now you might go, well, I drove out here. I'm like, but you didn't start working. Would you prefer, I, I, I'm telling you up front, Mike, I'm going to, there's a crew coming in an hour. They're, they're, they're going to build this house for me. So, I mean, so Mike, I really, I'll send it to you. I'm not going to call you every day, ask you how class is going. Let me give you an idea, Mike. It's not going to be the most exciting information you've ever studied. It's not that boring, to be honest. I thought it was pretty interesting, but you're not going to be entertained like you're watching your favorite TV show. But you're going to have to do it. It means you're going to set some time aside at night and get it done. The longer you wait, the longer, Mike, you're going to be working the job. You're working 50 grand a year. But do me a favor. Don't complain because you have the ability to go change it. This is very simple. Our average agent makes over 100 grand a year, and they're not... We're surrounded by a bunch of men and women that aren't like the most amazing salespeople where they're great people, but they don't have these like, oh my God, I can walk in a room and sell anything to anybody. They don't, we don't have that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but we don't have to sell it, Mike. We're taking orders, not selling, okay? Now also, Mike, every single person you work with that you build houses with, you know what they're going to say if you tell them you get your life insurance license? What's that? They're going to go, that sounds stupid. Do you know why they're going to say that? No. Because they're miserable too. <laughs> Fair enough. And if you and I don't mean everybody. I'm just saying if they're dogging you, because what you should say, a normal response would be, "Hey, man, good luck. That sounds cool. Hey, let me know if, it, if it, how it works out. If it works out for you, man. Maybe I'll get mine." But what a lot of people do is they're not changing, so they'll go like, "You know what? That's stupid. It'll never work." And then you go, "Did you ever try it?" No. I mean, that being like me going, "Man, you know what really sucks is competitively swimming. It sucks." You know, like, did you ever do it? No, never done it at all. <laughs> No, I barely get back and forth in the pool once. No, I've never done it, but it sucks. Well, how would I know? I wouldn't know. So, so Mike, I'm just telling you, I'm trying to help you out. I have no problem getting you in class. Get your email address, boom, we're sending you a voucher right now. Mike, do me a big favor. Today is Friday. Call me on Monday at this number or shoot me a text and let me, this is my cell, and let me know how you're doing in class. Okay. Now, if he never texts me, never texts me. I don't go, I didn't receive your text. That's still my favorite line of the year, the guy going, why are you on vacation? Because I'm an independent contractor. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a pretty good response. Like, don't treat them like they're your employee. I mean, yeah, checkmate. Like, what are you going to say to that? And I think we learn from that, though, right? Like, it's, it's, 
at the end of the day, I'm not trying to make anybody do anything. Now, Mike, if I talk to 10, 12 people in a week and put them in a class, and two of them text me. Now, the funny thing is we have guys and girls that are called. I just work with those two. Right. I don't smother them. I don't call them 15 times a day. And I just and I do the same thing in my warm market. You know, and I don't go like, well, I put him in class, but he's never going to do it. Then why'd you put him in class? What are you saying to them to take control of the city if they're contracts? So now, Mike, if you're a contracted agent, you can be company ABC, but I call you up, you say hello. I go, Mike, it's Sean, you respond to my zip recruiter ad, or whatever other ad you're all running, or you found me on social media, you reached out to me. I'm getting back to you either way. Mike, it looks like you're in the insurance industry now, correct? Correct. Got it. How many years have you been in the business? Uh, seven years. Okay, seven. And how old are you, Mike? You know what I'm asking? Uh, 33. Got it. So I've been around seven years in the business. Um, let me ask you, number, number one, what was it about, since you've been in the business, what was it about us or the ad I ran that was attractive enough for you to respond? Um, talk about leads and, and high comp. So right now, I don't, I'm struggling to get leads, and I could always use a higher comp. So Got it. Okay. Give you a little background on us. Um, you know, the, the leadership team that built the company, been salespeople at their core, um, you know, have always run it. Matter of fact, you know, I was just talking to, so I, if it's me, if somebody else talking about me, the company doesn't matter. I sold a bunch of life insurance, so I run the company. But, you know, if it's going good, I'm, I'm you know, I'm in charge of not. No, it's always the opposite. If it's going great, y'all, you you're great. If it's bad, then we'll fix it. It's my fault. But, but at the end of the day, we're a bunch of people understand what it's like to be at the dining room table till 9, 10 o'clock at night. Okay, so Mike, we do pay very high comp. We are a big believer in leads. We're a big believer in the training. Um, what's been your best income year in the life insurance business in seven years? Uh, a little over 100. A little over 100. Yeah. Okay. And what are you looking to make? Just so I can get my mind around it. I mean, I'd like to double that. Okay. I'd like to double it. Do you work 40 hours a week in insurance? When I have enough leads, yes. Okay. When you have enough leads. All right. So if we get enough leads in your hands, when, when would you want to start working 40 hours a week with us? Uh, yeah, as soon as possible. As soon as possible, okay. So I go through contract, what contract I put them at, the whole deal. And I go, Mike, listen, I'm gonna be straight up with you. A lot of companies hire everybody, we don't. Um, just what would be, what would make me feel real confident? Because you understand there's responsibility and liability for all of us. What would make me feel real confident about you as it pertains to our clients? What is something that, uh, about you or the way you interact with them? What is there something that, this is kind of where you're kind of selling me on why I want to go ahead and get your contract and start working with you. But give me a, one or two things about you that at night I can go, man, I feel good about having Mike in business with me because he does X. Got it. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I believe in life insurance. Uh, I've lost family members and didn't have life insurance, so I've I seen what that does to families. So I love what I do. I love sitting down with a family and knowing that when I left that house, I put them in a better position um, than they were before I got there. I just want to be able to be paid what I feel is, you know, adequate for what I'm doing. Fair enough. And I think a lot of, do we get that? Yes. Now we also get like, everything in the world's terrible, this right. business, and I go, okay, well, what was it about you where you're at? So if Mike said, man, my best year is 30 grand, and nobody makes money there, I'd go, I know the company. Somebody's making money there, Mike, so if you don't mind me asking, how many we, well, when I have leads, and I kind of give the, I had a guy say this to me one time in real estate. I said, you know, it's about impossible to make money doing this. It's hard to find listings, I said. Everybody's worried about, because then in real estate for our office, it was all about how many listings you have, right? They have this leaderboard of listings, and the guy Frank looked at me and said, if there was a gun to the back of your head, and Gail, who was our manager, said, we're gonna pull the trigger if you don't get 20 new listings a month, would you ever miss 20? I said, of course not. He goes, what do we mean, of course not? I said, of course not, I would never miss 20. No, of course not. He's like, so it's very reasonable. Yeah, it's very reasonable, it's feasible, yes. So why can't you act like your life depends on it, within reason. Because he said your financial life does depend on it. And it never, that never escaped me when it was like life insurance. I mean, we didn't have leads either when we started. Um, when we started 10, 11 years ago, we didn't have any leads. We just made the best of it. We sold people, we called people, we door knocked people. I mean, we, you know, if you fill out a lead in your neighborhood, buckle up, because we might knock on these doors over here and go, hey, your neighbor would fill this out, can't give your information, but you're gonna get one too. I'm just, I'm here earlier. You want me to take my shoes off? I think we started with the whole, you want me to take my shoes off? We don't have leads. Like, we gotta get in the house. So we had to ask them something. You know, like, would you like me to take my shoes off? How about being presumptive? And that's weird too. People just like can't, you know, that's, that was my door knock. You know, you'd answer the door. I go, hey, Mike? Yeah, who are you? Hey, I'm Sean, Mike. Uh, Christina's here, right? Hey, Mike, you fill this thing out. Man, it's hard to get a hold of you. We're worried about something weird, something happening. You want me to take my shoes off? I mean, I'm there. And most of the time what they say, don't worry about taking them off. 
yes, please, thank you for asking. I did the same. Uh, if I didn't, my mom would smack me back of the head. I kind of put my hand back because my mom was behind me. I didn't ask you, whack real quick. Like I just talked about, and it was the same stuff, which is all like I am supposed to ask that. My mom would be very upset and she wasn't afraid to hit me. So like all of that's true. But at the end of the day, it's the presumptiveness we need to hire and build with the same presumptiveness. Why do our agents, why are they so good at being so presumptive? And also, if that 10, 15, 20% of their clients, whatever their percentage is, some are close 90, some close 50, if those people aren't going to buy something, why are, Mike, why are they so comfortable with it? Why does Ivan know that if Tom says no and he finds out in seven minutes, why is Ivan 100% fine with, I did, as long as he does his best, asked him, pushed him, he leaves, why is Ivan okay? He's got 29 other appointments. Got 29 other appointments. <laughs> we got plenty of leads. Hiring's the same way. Could you imagine some people, their hiring would be analogous to their selling if they took the one client that said no and tried to, because they liked them, like the client said something nice, like you're the nicest person ever, Mike. And if you give us our business card, and then can you imagine they stay there for two and a half hours talking to those clients? They never sell anything. We have people that do the same on the hiring side. They go, I don't like this guy. I'm like, why? He was really obnoxious. What'd he say? Well, he said, I'm really good, and I saw your leaderboard. I going to be the top one. I'm like, did you hire him? Sounds like a good guy to hire. I'm pretty excited. Would you rather have him go, you're the best person ever in the world, and I can never be as good as you? I'm not looking for that. I'm looking, as long as he wasn't like cussing you out, was being respectful. So I think on our side, as we're halfway through this year, we're at the 50 yard line, you see our numbers us going to 250 million, us looking at 350 next year, us thinking about becoming a billion dollar company. We can't have limits. We can't have a ceiling. I don't know what the ceiling is. What's the ceiling? I don't know what it is. And I'm not being cute or flippant. I don't know what it is. If we're doing the amount of volume we're doing with a couple thousand people, what can we do with 50,000 agents? And if there are millions contracted, what is 50,000? Nothing. So for us, we've just begun. We had a discussion in staff meeting. How many of you believe we do it now again? We'll know next week if we hit eight million for the month. Maybe we won't. I think we will. But I went around and and everyone was like, no, no, man, we just, man, we just went to six and seven. No, we just, man, I think we'll do it in September, January, October. I'm like, I'm gonna fire all of you. We're gonna do it in June. And the reason we're gonna do it is there is no limit on this business. We haven't even begun. If you're doing 400 grand a month, you can be doing 4 million. And it's not like me trying to convince you. That's valid. That's 100% accurate. We just started. And the sky's truly the limit, which means we have no limit. There is no limit. I have this obnoxious blue. My office is painted, right, Mike? Pretty obnoxious. <laughs> and my deal is in my little world, it's like sky's the limit, man. There is no limit. There's no limitation on us. Look at the sky. It's not sky blue, but somehow it makes me feel Pretty good. Close. Pretty close. But a little bit more of like a pop, yeah. you know? And uh, because it doesn't matter, hiring and selling go together. Focus on your sales first. Find candidates you enjoy talking to and you believe your clients will enjoy. Find hard workers. Help them be accountable. When somebody's asking for advice and direction, provide it. When they're not and they don't want it, leave them alone. If I pull over and go, you all set? The person goes, yeah, I'm good, thanks for asking. I move on. I don't go, you must not be all set. Your car, hood of your car is, they're like, leave me alone, you're freaking me out. I already called the cops. I called this person, called that person, and I know what's going on in my car. I leave them alone. But if they go, no, I can need a hand, I pull over and help them. Keeps my mind right, keeps us focused, let's grow it. Let's have a massive week, let's finish this month strong. Let's finish and start, hey, here's the good news about the first half. If you didn't like it, it's over, it don't matter. Fix it, if you loved it, duplicate it. Appreciate you, thanks for jumping on. Thanks for everything you do, thanks for helping so many families and serving, and uh, I love what we're doing here, and we are certainly all in the rest of this year, and we're going to absolutely blow these numbers through the roof because we can, people deserve it, y'all deserve it, so appreciate it. Thanks for jumping on.